is up. <laughs> well, well, well. The universe has a really, really interesting way of putting things together. I want to start off this video about Egypt with the following. Um, I have been collecting today some pictures of old Egypt, of uh, some of the first photographs and some illustrations and stuff. And then, as I was just cooking about 10 minutes ago, I started watching John Levy's uh, new video. And here it is. And he was talking about Gary Schoening and his statement that he believes that these statues on the Easter Island have possibly been columns, supporting columns, and have just been recarved by the people that came later in. And I was like, hmm, hold on a sec. I got a picture that reminds me of these. And that are these columns in Egypt and look especially at this one this is the right angle see this top hat and you could easily carve a face and a body out of it these look practically identical just in a different original form so I put them together and yeah, I do think that they are definitely right. Really nice synchronicity, I would say. So yeah, welcome to a new video and let's get started. As we are looking at pictures of complete destruction in this video, I thought it would be good to have a quick look at, you know, who the supposed people are that we see in these photographs, besides, of course, um, the people of that country at that time. And yeah, here we have Egyptology. And of course, there's a whole nother aspect of this, of the story when it comes to all of these um, novels and books written around the 18-1900s um, where you know the people go there and they talk about their adventures and their meetings with the natives and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go into that. Let's just have a quick look at, at Egyptology because um, honestly sorry about the sirens, I live in the post of it, uh, New York so yeah, as you can see here, uh, there is not a lot, um, and most of it is modern Egyptology, but yeah. There are some things that I didn't know and that supposedly happened and that I find fascinating. So, um, Egyptology is the study of ancient Egyptian history, language, literature, religion, architecture and art from the 5th millennium BC until the end of its native religious practices in the 4th century AD. I really despise these, how they, how they call time, and it, it confuses me every time. Even if I look it up, millennium BC, 4th century AD, it's just like my, my brain does not compute. Anyway. A practitioner of the discipline is an Egyptologist. In Europe, Particularly on the continent, Egyptology is primarily regarded as being philolo a philological discipline, which is the study of language and oral and written historical sources. And uh, in North America, it is often regarded as a branch of archaeology, where they dig out stuff out of the mud. All right, so the first explorers were the ancient Egyptians themselves. Wow! 
prompted by a dream he had. Tutmos restored the Sphinx and had the dream that inspired the restoration, the restoration carved on the famous dream stele, which is this stone in front of the, in front of the pyramid. Less than two centuries later, Prince came came visit, fourth son of fourth son of Ramses would gain fame for identifying and restoring historic buildings, tombs, and temples, including pyramids, and has subsequently been described as the first Egyptologist. And I know I don't I didn't have like a very good, <laughs> a very long education, and we almost didn't touch on Egypt in. In history class, but history was always my favorite. Although, yeah, school didn't satisfy that at all. But that's isn't that isn't that interesting that the, the people themselves that still live there, um, and they were still um, pharaohs. Oh, well, he looks a bit different than the others. Okay, let's. Okay, and we have Ramses. And yeah, of course, I can say, you know, they were like changing power structures and building all of these new temples and stuff. But um, it's really interesting that the son of Ramses II would gain fame for identifying and restoring historic buildings, tombs, and temples, including pyramids. Um, interesting. I just find it fascinating. Then we have our favorite one. <laughs> well, after the Middle Ages, of course, the Greco-Roman period. Some of the first historical accounts of Egypt were given by Herodotus, Strabo, Diodorus Siculus, and the largely lost work of Manetho, an Egyptian priest during the reign of Ptolemy I and Ptolemy II in the 3rd century BC. The Ptolemies were very interested in the work of the ancient Egyptians, and many of the Egyptian monuments, including the pyramids, were restored by them. The Ptolemies also built many new temp temples in Egyptian style. The Romans also carried out restoration work in Egypt. What are they doing there in Egypt? Do, do, you really, do, do they really think we believe, I believe that... Okay, so I'm gonna tell you what this sounds to me, and let me know in the comments what this sounds to you. Uh, to me, this sounds like these expeditions that were held in the first and second, you know, uh, wars that we had like a hundred years ago, and um, where they were looking for artifacts and technology and probably spells and mummies and um, all of this stuff from previous civilizations that would give them power, technology, information. Yeah, that's that's the main main thing I think, um, or even looking for spe special beings that maybe hide somewhere in these, in these underground places beneath those those structures. Um, so yeah, when I hear that that they go in and restore it, well, then it doesn't absolutely doesn't make sense that we find everything in such a destruction as we. As the pictures show, so um, that's that's really really weird. That sounds fishy to me. The Middle Ages. Throughout the Middle Ages, travelers on pilgrimages to the Holy Land would occasionally detour to visit sites in Egypt. Destinations would include Cairo and its environ environs where the Holy Family was thought to have fled, and the Great Pyramids, which were thought to be the Joseph's Granaries. Okay. So they thought they would, they would, the pyramids were for grain. All right, good, let, that, let them be. Um, built by the Hebrew patriarch to store grain during the years of plenty. A number of their accounts have survived and offer insights into conditions in their perspective time periods. Well, yeah. 
Then we had a teacher at Cairo's university in the 13th century who wrote detailed descriptions of ancient Egyptian monuments. Similarly, the 15th century Egyptian historian Al Makrizi wrote detailed accounts of Egyptian antiquities. And we're going to go into some of the, of the illustrations, but we heard it about map makers too. Most of the people weren't they, they weren't traveling there, and um, they didn't have any connection to it really. But yeah. Okay, the Europeans. European exploration and travel writings of ancient Egypt commenced in the 13th century, with only occasional detours into what could be considered a scientific approach. Then we had a couple of people listed here. In the early, in the early 17th century, John Greaves measured the pyramids, having inspected the broken obelisk of the Mission in Rome, then intended for Lord Arnold's collection in London. Interesting word using here. Let's, let's, let's just look at this lord. Who is this? Thomas Howard, 14th Earl of Arundel. Beautiful, beautiful name, Arundel. Okay, so he supposedly lived from 1585 to 1646 and was a prominent English courtier during the reigns of King James I and II. But he made his name as a grand tourist, an art collector, and an art collector rather than as a politician. When he died, he possessed, officially, 700 paintings along with large collections of sculpture, books, prints, drawings, and antique jewelry. Most of his collection of marble carvings known as the Arundel marbles, well, I hope he's had now he didn't lost his marbles, was eventually left to the University of Oxford. Okay, and then here it talks about how it's, uh, yeah, how it's confusing what kind of earl he is, because then later on he was the Earl of Surrey and the first Earl of Norfolk. But of course he was a patron of the arts. He collected drawings by Leonardo da Vinci, Holbein's, Raphael, Dura. Yeah, many of these are now at the Royal Library at Windsor Castle or Chatsworth. And um, yeah, really, really interesting, really, really interesting people these were that collected all of the stuff, supposedly. Okay, let's go back. So, this guy that John Greaves, the, yeah, okay. He measured the pyramids and collected all of the stuff for his, of course, wealthy patrons. Um, because we know that the people that went to Egypt from Europe were most of the time described as uh, people either that had very wealthy and royal um, or very wealthy, um, you know, people that would give them money and would finance this, financiers, or there would be people from the Royal Society or for some, for some brotherhood to go and check out what's up there. Um, this guy also went on to publish the illustrated Pyramodiographia in 1646, while the Jesuit scientist priest Anathasius Kirche was perhaps the first to hint at the phonetic importance of Egyptian hieroglyphs, demonstrating Coptic as a vestige of early Egyptian, for which he is considered a founder of Egyptology. Okay, on that note, guys. Martin um, from Flat Earth British had, get, had uh, yesterday a brilliant guest on. It was a wonderful talk, and he had Russ from from Symroglyphics on, and he is a publisher, uh, from what I understood, and a researcher himself about the Welsh history, and they had a brilliant talk yesterday, um, and he has published books by authors that basically decoded, um, and you can learn, very, he said it's very easy, you can learn how to read hieroglyphs, and um, 
yeah, with with uh, the published works that he had from his uh, his authors. Let me just see if I can. No, I don't think I can. Anyhow, watch that whole thing. It's brilliant. I haven't. And the funny thing is, guys, I haven't been watching Martin and John for quite a while now. I needed to to take a break, and their stuff is always a lot for the brain to digest. But yeah, I was coming back to both of them yesterday and both of them um, had something in their presentation that was related to what I was preparing about Egypt. And just because, again, I stumbled upon, upon this, these pictures and I was like, whoa, okay, that's, that's, that's really weird. And, um, well, the pictures. And also they are talking about the Rosetta Stone and the Welsh language and language in general and yeah, just exchanging um, ideas and yeah it was a really really good talk so I would suggest everyone to go ahead and have a look at that and not, not only because of the information they both had a very um, nice um, they work really good together when it comes to energy it was really fun watching them so yeah um, of course the modern Egyptology starts with Napoleon in the 18th century and blah, 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 and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And then we have everything that comes up. Well, when does it start, really? In the 2000s. So from the 2000s, we have a bunch of information here. Of course, this is not... Oh, these are not all of the accounts, but yeah. So this is Egyptology. I must confess that when I saw some of these photographs, I was stunned. Um, it is one thing to see all of these illustrations from the earlier times, like the supposed Napoleon times when they went in and um, see these fantastical pyramids and you know drawings and stuff and all of the mud um, it's not all sand and we're gonna see this in these photographs too some could argue that you know uh, with the time sand just came in and yeah yeah sure but um, it is destruction and it is mud also um, on very few pictures you actually see sad um but yeah i was i was really struck and let's start just with this amazing picture with the three different types of trees they look like they are um protecting like they are guardians it's it's really really cool um Really interesting photograph, but yeah. <laughs> Can you see the people? Here are two itsy bitsy peoples. Here are two. And yeah, here we see sand, sure. But what about this? Well, of course, first the sheer size of that. But what, 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 what's that? Mm, was that done by a storm or by weathering or by an earthquake? Nah, I don't think so. This looks blown up and melted. Whether that has been all made out of clay or rock or stone, whatever. This, these are probably some parts of that statue was, it looks, it looks blown up and, and melted. And as I'm working with clay at the moment, this looks like somebody has just like grabbed onto the, his, his torso and head and just, you know, scratched it off. They look very smooth. It does not look like explosion, it looks really weird. It just looks like clay, like somebody wasn't 
quite happy with his work and he just like pshaw, pshaw, thrown it out of the thrown it away from the temple not very far I do think I, I could imagine that this was part of that statue here we have a picture from earlier and yeah this one just definitely looks like one of those faces. I mean, to carve out something like a face, I mean, you already have the nose, you have the head, you have the the hat and the head. Smooth out this part, put in the hands, and here you have your here you have your giant statue. Yeah, people just wandering around. Definitely bird buried columns. You don't need that massive column if you don't. I mean the 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 thickness of them, the sheer mass of them, and their height just doesn't add up at all. And as you will see in the other pictures, there was definitely, and yeah, of course there there some of them are near the Nile, and there are um, floods and stuff. But again, if we know what is, has happened all around the world, um, it wouldn't surprise me if that was something similar too. And here we can see a really interesting, cool tower. Gonna have a look at that uh, later on. And yeah, and they just built some, some walls, some structures, and put in some stairs. Easy breezy. Here we have one of the illustrations. The pyramids in the water. Fully intact. Yeah, so that is not sand. That's even probably not mud, although I wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if mud was underneath there. That's rubble. That's complete. Well, not complete, of course. There's still stuff standing. But that is all material that has been crushed. And there are so many pictures of this. Here we have another flooded area. But again, look at this. This is rubble. This is pieces of, I don't know, statues. I mean, if these, like, they're quite tiny, tiny pieces, so they have been crushed. Okay, and we're gonna see that uh, a little bit later in other pictures too. I mean, like, okay, if you can, you know, what kind of power do you need to crush, crush like a giant piece of stone? Um, maybe these were bricks? I don't know. But they definitely beheaded most of the lions here. Yeah, here we have it again. Like what? What? It looks like clay. Or like someone went in with like a hot, something like a hot knife or something and just cut it down. And then some of it, because it was harder, you know, kind of crumbled away. But like, what does this? If humans were chiseling away on that, I mean, pff, come on. By the way, here's a human. Here we have it again. This is just not just worn down by weather and whatever. This looks like after a big war. And here we have, here we have, I think actually we have some mud. Some dried mud. But yeah, and it, this kind of destruction, very similar all over the place. Another lithograph. <laughs> and buried 
destroyed, blown away. And when I look at this, I hear in my, in my head that it was a sound weapon, that it was a frequency weapon with like a, a pulse. Um, it would, first of all, um, go in like a, like a wave, and then I think the explosion would start. I don't know where this comes from right now, but that's what I see. Like, it has different parts of how it's acting. Just like, a, you know, what we see with our mushroom bombs, whatever. But here again. Mud? Mud anyone? War, mud and utter destruction. Anyone? Like this just looks like a giant. Okay, what this looks like to me is like they they had like this um, frequency weapon that would heat up in the process of it hitting them, hitting this place. It would heat up some of the components. Um, as we can see, most of the time the blocks like the the stone blocks are standing still standing but a lot of the statue stuff uh, is kind of destroyed so probably maybe they are made out of different things maybe the statues were actually made out of clay that would ex uh, explain their um, uh, the 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 exactness and the, cl the cleanness, cleanliness, not, not cleanliness, the smoothness of, of their shapes, but I could be wrong on that. But that would explain a little bit why they are more likely to be destroyed um, than these building blocks that were probably made out of another rock. Anyhow, so there were these giants, right? And they were just like blasting their weapons at this, then it would heat up and they would just come in with their hammers or whatever weapons they had and just like, you know, punch the, the, the punch them. I don't want to swear too much in this video. Um, but yeah, this is how it looks, what it looks like. Like some, some things got, you know, destroyed because of the, of the, of the pulse. Um, then things got heated up and then they just came in and just wiped it wiped it away and it doesn't look like a really um like a systematic destruction 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 like they want to wipe out it looks like an act of emotion and rage honestly because if you want to destroy something and just like leave no trace of it like really destroy the history of that place you would have to remove you would have to remove the statues, destroy the statues, and the hieroglyphs. And then you just leave people with architecture that they cannot really, you know, identify. Of course, they make their stories up, but if you really, really want to um, sort of like dilute this, the story of a place, that's what, what you would have to do. So, uh, in my opinion, this looks like an act of extreme emotional... Uh, Disregulation, let's say it like that. Here we have some people, and again, buried. Anyone? <laughs> Mud flood, anyone? Yeah, again, here we have rubble. This could be definitely flooded. And maybe, you know, after like the, the great worldwide cataclysm, um, they were coming in and having some emotional attacks about the world that has gone by and they just kind of raged and destroyed stuff. Maybe even because of the heartbreak, maybe these giants had lost their people. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, if you have seen Lord of the Rings, when they come into the catacombs, into the kingdom of the dwarves, I think his name is Gimli, one of the, the dwarves that is with them, and he sees all of his people wipe out. 
I mean, he, he doesn't go into rage, but I just thought about something like that. When you come back into a place that you thought would actually still exist some, somewhat, and you see the destruction, and maybe even, you know, this kind of destruction where, like, the, the place is disintegrated um, and the mud is, is up high, um, maybe that was there and then later, you know, the people came in, had this emotional shock and just crushed some of the, some of the statues and stuff like that. I have no idea where that came from, but here you go. This is my theory now. Ah, uh, look, look how big that is. <laughs> this lioness statue is bigger than the people down here. I mean, if that's a sarcophag sarcophagus for, for a being, that being is very, very large. Very, very large. Alright, so this of course is a very low resolution picture, but again, this does not look like just like sand, like, you know, sand dunes and just like clear sand to me. This looks like destruction. This looks like maybe there were more of these here around. Maybe this was what was on top or the building surrounding that, that structure. Because that's just that looks even worse than some of the temples that's like yeah complete blast blasting this place up another one of the drawings and yeah i mean martin has done amazing work on that martin Lietke, um showing all of the illustrations where they come in and everything is just buried Another picture. I mean, how gigantic that is. Yeah. I mean, if that, if that wasn't a weapon, then yeah, I, I will in my shoes. Here they are restoring in the 60s. So here, the first time, I would say we see sand, <laughs> but we also have, of course, uh, our theories on how the sand came into Africa and how, our, you know, all of these um, deserts came to be. There are many different theories on that. All I think we can all agree on, one thing that we can all agree on, on I think, is that they were not... This is not natural. Again, destruction, 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 destruction. Yeah, you see weathering, but like, I mean, if, if a human comes up to here, let's say, I mean, I don't know the scale of this statue, but there are statues where the human comes up with his head, max, like max up to here. Who could disintegrate these these things like seriously it just doesn't make any sense here we see this uh, stone and there are a lot of really really great researchers working on the mystery of the sphinx and uh, from what i know there were two sphinxes And sphinxes are found all over the world. They are representatives of a certain off-world species, um, a consciousness, a people, um, and also, of course, an archetype. Giant columns. Giant statues. I mean, this is the seed of the guy. You see, here's his hand. He's sitting on his uh, throne and he's like oh well 
So, uh, uh, I'm just going to stand here in this picture, and then I'm going to look very important, and uh, I'm going to look like I really, like, like I know what, what I'm doing. Like, oh, look how interesting this place is, how, how mystical. Like, dude, that's, that's, that's some advanced stuff. That's some reset stuff. <laughs> Yeah, and here it is again. Destruction on the ground. This is not sand. I don't... Maybe it's even... Could be mud, but it looks more like broken pieces. And here is the, the head that we saw earlier. And it's all there. I mean, if the, all of these people from the different time periods came in and did restoration here and did restoration there and blah, blah, and blah, blah. Well, wh wh why it is in such a shape? Oh, of course, because it's gigantic stones. But what happened? Like, like to throw, like, you know, to, to just like, break off their heads and throw them just a meter or two to decide what kind of power do you need <laughs> like come on it's just ridiculous here's some more of the lions abu simba and they also look pretty disintegrated they look baked Yeah. <sighs> rubble, rubble, rubble. Rubble, rubble, rubble. This is not natural. This is signs of destruction. Complete and utter destruction. Oh, and these two. They look like a shockwave hit them. What do you guys think? Oh, and of course we have like this straight, almost straight line, this plateau in the background with what, these are caves? Like, these were, I think they are called, yeah, the Colossi of Memnon. And I'm thinking about the book of the never, I'm sorry, the book of the never ending story. And this looks actually like dried mud. Uh, I'm thinking about the book of Never Ending Story. I mean, the movie is is, is not worth mentioning. Even the author said it's like, it's, it's a disgrace. But everyone... Oh, I should have said this in the live stream. Um, one book that I would definitely recommend is The Never Ending Story. Because where the film ends, the book actually really starts. The film ends, or the movies... Um, there are a couple of them. The story of the movies ends in the middle of the book and then it goes into its... I would compare it to The Alchemist. Um, and this reminds me of that, about the sphinxes and, you know, they are um, guarding the, the entryways and maybe they were guarding the entry to this giant city that was here, in here. Or even the tree, who knows, maybe, I don't know if they were, of course, put there at the same time as maybe this is a tree stamp. Because it looks very like a clean cut. Um, would have to look at other pictures, but yeah, they look like they have been definitely hit by a shockwave. Um, the others look more like baked and dis destroyed. This, this, this looks like... It was hit by a shockwave and then started crackling and cracking up and falling apart. Yeah, here we have the column comparison from John. A trippy, fantastical picture. Well, yeah, I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> And what's also always fascinating to me is that they're always sort of smiling. They always have these very gentle 
facial expressions. Most of the statues, most most of the depictions, even of the gods, they all have this very gentle. What well, not all? I have, of course haven't seen them all. Haven't been in the presence of them all. Also, but at the end of this video, I'm well. In a couple of minutes, I'm gonna go into more of a galactic connection there and some thoughts on that. And in case you are new to this channel, to my channel, um, before you make any any comment, please, 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 beware that I will always go into ancient people and galactic stuff, period. That's my personal experience of my life. If, if you don't have that experience, that's fine. If you don't believe in it, that's completely fine. Please don't make any kind of, you know, bitchy or meme comments. Um, that would be really, really nice because we all have our own experience of reality. And um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm going to go into just in a couple of uh, minutes or in a couple of seconds um, into s something that I've, a connection that I found between Egypt and a series that is uh, depicting a lot of the off-world, interworld connection. Again, this looks melted, melted, smoothed out. Yeah. Ah, this, this, this just doesn't look like sand. It isn't. Because it isn't. If it doesn't look like it, it isn't, right? And here, yeah, of course, we have water here, so you can see some water damage. Probably destroyed these uh, clay buildings. Another one. It's the gateway of the Luxor Temple in the 1860s. Buried. Buried, buried. This big ass obelisk. And here we have the, tem uh, the tower that we saw in the beginning. And again, like, who punched the faces out? Like, come on. Like, Somebody was really, really angry. And again, I do think that these two, I mean, you see it also. I see it. Let's say like this, I see it. But two different materials, maybe even two different, two different periods of times. Because they seem way, way hardier, way um, sturdier than most of the... Uh, the statues. Yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, come on. This is all destroyed material, all destroyed blocks. Like, like, you need even like a giant giant, like a really, or a couple of them to knock this thing over. And I'm not going to go even into this how to, to build this and carve this out and move this. And that's, I mean, we know, we know, we know that we don't know, but we know that, that, that they, they definitely tell us some bullshit here. So these were the pictures of Egypt. Alrighty, guys, so let's get fantastical. Let's get sci-fi-ish. Let's get ancient ancient and gigantic for me it is all connected as i said just early in the video it, it, there is always this other other world connection off world connection whatever we think we know about space and out there i don't think that we get it yet i mean this is this is the awakening from the dark times from the times of forgetfulness so um, as I always say, I'm open to different perspectives. I have my set of beliefs, but they are not, you know, they are not set in stone. But I do have my set of beliefs based on my own experience, based on what I remember from different lives um, and parallel lives. And that is other societies, other worlds, spacecraft, 
um, not travel through space, but definitely um, jumps. And all of this stuff is portrayed in a new series that is called The Foundation. So if you are not that sensitive that you get like a little heart attack or have to puke if you see space portrayed, <laughs> go and watch that series. It has so much juice in it. So, okay. This is a large drawing and it is called the Beacon of Progress. We have another picture that is uh, depicting the whole thing. It's an artifact from the old Rogers building in Boston. And it's, it's they say it's a very, very large drawing and perhaps be, be, that's because, yeah, of course, that's because it hasn't been exhibited since probably the 1920s. Um, so yeah, this reminds me very much of Egypt, but this could be just again a worldwide very ancient society of very large people um, and a lot of them too so let's have a look at the whole thing this now this to me does not look like a drawing of course we have this discussion about the lithographs and how is it possible that there was so much detail you can zoom in that far and um, yeah are these all the lithographs a lot of them photographs what about the photographs that we have of the 1860s that are clearer than from the 1900s or yeah all of these things about photographs and capturing something but this to me it feels and it looks like a photograph. Here we have some giant statues guarding the entrance. And I will show you in a second why I think this has to do with um, other worlds. But let's just, just breathe in that, that sheer size of that thing. And I think that this is some sort, because we tend to imitate nature, and I do think that this is some sort of resemb resemblance of nature, but more of a, I mean, it's a phallic, it's a, it's a phallic symbol, it's um, an obelisk. So it kind, it, I do think that this is probably piercing some sort of a very big ley line energy point. Just my opinion here, of course. So, <laughs> this, this series is just, is honestly mind-blowing. I personally have never been interested in sci-fi when I was younger, up until I found out, you know, about all of these other worlds and that these civilizations are there and that I learned from the ancient peoples, no matter if they are like native people or through fairy no, not fairy tales, but no matter if they're ancient people, like native people, or uh, like advanced civilizations, whatever, they all talk about the stars and they all talk about different dimensions and different beings and different species and advanced civilizations. So this series, I would recommend anyone who's interested in seeing that portrayed. It's very, very well made. Um, it's called Foundation. It's very, very well made. It talks about, it's the story, it's a, it's a story about knowledge and different types of people. It's a story about the emperor, I think of the galaxy, that um, has his dynasty and he clones himself for about four to 600 years. And very good actors. I would say good screenplay, uh, brilliant effects, um, very interesting story. Of course, it has a little bit of woke, woke culture in it, just a, bit, a tiny bit, but it's in there, just so you know. But it doesn't really, um, it doesn't really disturb the story too much. But yeah, um, that's just so fascinating. And I have been watching Beyond Mystic by Jean Claude. That's a, a show on YouTube and they have all sorts of guests and that's why I love them because they look at different perspectives and try to understand a bigger picture of reality. 
and of world civilizations have always, 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 always played a role. And as again, I'm talking about this because I have my own experience, so don't come for me. Um, so yeah, uh, it's Jean Claude at at from uh, Jean Claude from Beyond Mystic uh, was talking about uh, Battlestar Galactica and how because we have this thing with time, not all ships that are coming in or not all races or people that are coming in are from the same timeline as we because we are also in a different artificial density so it's, it's quite complicated this whole for our minds to, to grasp it's quite complicated even I, I i remember but it's still hard to to verbalize it too so he was talking about Battlestar galactica and how basically there was the story of people from the outer rim probably of the galaxy traveling backwards to find their origin and they're going from uh, from ruins to ruins to ruins on different uh, on different worlds to find the origin of their people and there's a whole lot of other things going on but that's the basic thing and just they so at, in this series um, they are also talking about like in the in the ninth episode that just came out recently i don't know if that's maybe the end of the season but they're talking they're talking about exactly the same thing they're talking about humanity um probably originating on earth and this ties into a lot of talk about why earth is so important and why there are so many different people here and there are many different perspectives of course but yeah this series um really highlights that but not only that let's get back to the to the tower thing so they have this gigantic ginormous tower that goes up out of the out of the realm into space and that tower gets gets destroyed and there is a whole lot of thing about prophecy and mathematics and basically there's there's one sort of scientist that that says okay this whole and um, this whole empire is going to get go down and we have to, you know, prevent this, blah, blah. And then they have some sort of a attack there. But this is what it reminded me of. Let me show another picture of that. Ooh, that's just scary. I, I don't like heights. But yeah, that's what, what this one reminded me of. <laughs> Probably had a different function, but... Yeah, I saw a connection there. Let's, let's just have a final look at this. It's just fascinating. It does look like a picture, doesn't it? Okay, guys, that's the video. Thank you very much. If you have stayed until the end, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was interesting. And um, wish you a lovely day as usual, as per usual, and hopefully see you next time. Bye bye.